going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new here, hit that subscribe button and turn on your bell notifications. That way you guys can stay up to date with all the projects on this channel. If you guys aren't new, thank you for the continued support and welcome back to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about my F3335i. So I recently did a video not too long ago about my first year of ownership with this car. Definitely go check out that video. The link will be in the description below. But today I want to discuss the things that I hate about this car. I've compiled a small little list here about the things that I don't like about this car. Some of it are actually specific to BMW, others are more specific to this actual car itself. Okay, so first off, let's talk about the more BMW specific items that I don't like. A lot of BMW models actually don't come with a spare tire and they also come with run flat tires. So this is gonna be kind of a two for one. Um, I really don't like run flat tires. So I've had several BMWs now and some of them have had run flat tires and I just don't like the way they feel. Run flat tires tend to pound over bumps a little bit harder because the sidewalls have less give. There's a lot more metal inside of the tires and uh, I personally prefer to have a summer set and a winter set and ditch the run flat all seasons altogether. So that's why I went with some 437s with some summer tires. And then I also have another set of 437s over here. And I'm actually gonna put another set of tires on those, which I will use for the winter time. But I would much rather ditch the run flats and actually have a spare tire in my trunk. That way, if I actually have a problem, I've got a spare I can just throw on and not have to worry about limping home. Um, obviously, you know, with a run flat, you tend to lose less air, um, but you still have to plug those tires anyway. So to me, it's not worth it. I'd rather have a tire that I can drive on that isn't so harsh and, and that is a little bit more confidence inspiring in the corners. Another thing that I don't like is the fact that BMW does not offer dipsticks in their car. The problem with not having a dipstick is the fact that you have to rely on the electronics to tell you when you're low on oil. Um, I like to check my oil levels if I can with an actual dipstick. It just kind of makes me feel a little bit better to actually physically see the oil itself versus relying on you know, a computer that may fail at some point over time as the car gets older, uh, but that's just a personal preference on my end. I also don't like the fact that BMW uses wheel bolts instead of wheel studs. It just makes it a lot harder for me to install wheels. Um, you kind of have to hold the wheel on with your knees and kind of juggle it while putting in the wheel bolts. Um, additionally, if you happen to want to buy wider wheels or put spacers on, then you're also required to buy longer wheel bolts. So that's kind of just an annoying thing to deal with all the time. Plus on my old um, E90 335 here, which you can see here, um, I actually had some wheel bolts on that car and I was driving down the road one time and all five of the wheel bolts sheared off and the wheel actually started coming off the car as I was driving. Fortunately, the car was lowered and uh, it kept the wheel inside the fender. Otherwise, my wheel would have completely gone off the car and uh, it would have been really bad. So, so I think it's just better to have a wheel stud conversion kit, which I actually did on my M3 and uh, I plan to do here on my F3335 at some point. Plus it all kind of depends on what you plan to do with the car. If you're tracking your, your vehicle, then it's probably a safer bet to have a wheel stud conversion kit um, especially if you're swapping wheels out left and right all the time, especially at the track, it's just easier to have, you know, actual studs that are coming off of the hub. That way you can easily align your wheels. You don't have to worry about, you know, finding the holes and, and you know, dealing with all the wheel bolts and all that. So it uh, just kind of depends on what you're doing with the car. My next complaint is more of a newer car thing. Um, due to the EPA, all of these newer cars have a auto start stop function. So that way when you're sitting at a light, it'll actually shut the car off for a few seconds um, until you take your foot off the brake and then the car starts again. Um, I really don't like that feature. I know that's just uh, an EPA environmental thing. Um, that's a requirement now. The good thing is BMW does put a button on here. That way you can actually turn that function off. My only complaint about the F30 and some of the other uh, newer BMW models is that the button, the button to turn off the auto start stop is literally above the start button. So sometimes, you know, with this car, I, if I find myself in a rush, I end up pushing both buttons on accident. And then next thing I know, I'm, I'm driving, I'm at a light and the car shuts off. So I wish that the F30 actually had that button somewhere else. For example, my E92 M3 actually has the button more so down here in the console area in the center console. That way I have to specifically go out of my way to push the button versus it being right here above the start button. I will say, however, the good thing about this is the fact that once I turn it off, I can actually hop back in the car and it's still off. 
Um, I know a lot of, you know, American cars, I've seen Fords specifically that you kind of have to push the, the off button every single time you're in the vehicle versus this one, which I turn off. It remembers it for the following time. Um, I just have to be cautious to not hit the button. Okay, so now that we've discussed all of the BMW um, general items that I don't like, we can actually talk about the F30 itself. One of the things that I don't like about this car are the interior rattles. So I recently did a video talking about this little door lock mechanism over here, a little pin that rattles. Um, and I did a DIY fix on that, so definitely go check that video out. But there are additional rattles in here that are kind of annoying. And I also found that I had the same similar rattles in my E90 335i back in the day. And one of them is going to be the door handles. So all the door handles here have these little crackling noises, especially when you go to like pull the door closed. just feels it just sounds cheap and you know, some doors are worse than others but kind of get the idea that these kind of make some noise and again my my e90 335 also did this my m3 doesn't have a problem like this uh, for some reason it's just like the lower models that I've noticed have this problem this is me being probably a little bit nitpicky but even the center armrest kind of makes you know, some weird squishy noises every once in a while. I know a lot of cars do that, and again, that's me being really nitpicky, but with this being a BMW, and which was, you know, probably a 60 plus thousand dollar car when it was new, this is just kind of little things that I don't like uh, to see in a car this expensive. I've also heard complaints from other people that talk about the rear deck there making some rattling noises, and uh, fortunately, I haven't had any issues with that. Um, and typically if I do notice some extra rattling, uh, my solution to that is to just kind of turn the music up and try to ignore it. Another little interior feature that I don't like is the fact that this car does not have um, auto climate control. So uh, basically it does have dual climate control, obviously, but there's no way for me to lock it together. So like my E92 M3, even my previous E90, um, all had a button where I could lock the two temperatures together. That way I wouldn't have to you know, rotate both dials. I could just, you know, hit the lock button and it would tie it both together. So um, this is kind of what I mean. So as you can see the driver's side, climate control is at 75 over here at 73. So, you know, say all of a sudden the temperature changes and it's getting real hot outside and I want to turn it all the way down to 60. I have to do it both sides. I know that's really, really nitpicky and kind of, it's just kind of an annoying thing that I have to do. Um, otherwise, you know, if I had a lock button here, I could just hit the lock button and it would change both simultaneously. So my car is a 2014 uh, M Sport model. So one of the things that I don't like that I actually ended up changing was the stock M Sport suspension. Um, it does sit a little bit lower than a normal 335 with the M Sport suspension, but I didn't find that suspension to be very uh, confidence inspiring. And it was kind of a, a sloppy suspension setup in my opinion. So I ended up changing to Bilstein B8s with H&R Sport Springs. I did some install videos on that, so definitely go check those videos out. While we're down here, another thing I don't like about this car are the M Sport brakes. They're a little bit more race inspired, I guess. And so I do get quite a bit of brake dust as well as um, a lot of brakes squeaking when coming to a stop. And I understand that they're performance brakes. I know that's a pretty normal thing, um, but I do find it to be pretty annoying. Additionally, the brake dust is quite a bit. I mean, I washed the car not too long ago and I'm, I've just got dust everywhere. I will be changing the pads on these soon, so hopefully that will minimize some of the dust. But as you can see, the calipers are actually pretty dirty and that stuff I cannot seem to get off. So I'll probably end up uh, painting the brake calipers in the winter sometime just to kind of clean it up and uh, as well as the hubs here you can see how dirty the hubs are down here so the brakes are something that maybe eventually i will change out if i keep the car long enough but uh the stock m sport brakes are just kind of annoying to me and uh it kind of just makes the car feel and sound cheap when i'm coming up to a stop and my brakes are squeaking and you know people start turning their heads and that sort of thing I'm sure I've got some other things that I can put on this list uh, that kind of bother me, but but the last major thing I want to discuss is the fact that this car does not have a limited slip differential. I understand that it's a normal, you know, regular three series. It's not an M car, uh, but for this car being as expensive as it is brand new, I am actually surprised that BMW does not put a limited slip in this car. Um, I actually had an older 05 G35 coupe, which was probably 
35 grand brand new and that car came with a limited slip so the fact that this car does not kind of disappointing um, i felt that same way with my e9335 back in the day and you know it's very noticeable when you're on the highway and you're you know maybe zigzagging in and out of traffic or something you can kind of feel that the car um, wants to kind of step out a little bit in the rear and having a limited slip would definitely help with that but um, if i keep the car long enough maybe that's something that i'll do but the likelihood of me doing that to this is probably pretty slim since it's just a daily driven car i'm not tracking it or anything like that but um, just having a limited slip would be nice but it is what it is okay so i know that was a lot and i know that i'm probably going to get some hate for some of the things that i've said but again these are my own personal opinions and uh, just my experience with the car and with some of the older bmws that i've had um, generally speaking the car is really really good i will be doing a follow-up video of the things that i do love about this vehicle which is quite a bit of things so so i don't expect everyone to agree with the things that i've said here but um, i'm sure that some of you can kind of relate to some of the, the items that i've pointed out in today's video so if you guys have any comments or questions please let me know in the comments below otherwise we will see you guys on the next video again stay tuned i'm going to do a things that i like about this car video uh, which should be coming soon so we'll see you guys in the next video take care